Hello, Mr. Elliot. I am back What's again. Up? Now, again. you have something different last time. You didn't have the blacked outs. No, this is new this year. So these are, it's a pair of 2020s. That's all that comes in now. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a kind of our blacked out uh, 860. Mm -hmm. And then behind me is the blacked out 760. What's the difference between the two? Seven inches. Uh, That's it. So this is a 70 inch high rise sleeper. It's going to be a 77 inch condo sleeper, uh, mm. same as the old 780. So not much has changed for this year uh, from the last time you were here, which we had the 2018s last time. Mm -hmm. Few little changes, but not much. So um, on the 760, there's a few things. So we blacked this one out just to be different. Mm -hmm. um, Alcoa came to us with these these brand new wheels that are on here. Um, these are black aluminum. So these are the first two trucks to come off the line that have these. Uh, there are matching wheel covers that go over the top. We just haven't put them on yet. So but this is black aluminum. It's not powder coated. It's just it's going to be polished black. Um, so we decided since we're going to do these, we might as well make the truck black. And mm -hmm. so we kind of murdered it out a little bit. So black inserts on the front grill front bumper uh black on the mirrors black on these mirrors as well there's hardly any chrome um this is finished from the factory there's not much i can do about that but we could take that off and change it and spray it uh flat black if we wanted to so they can ask for that yeah we can change it here we can do it locally so your air intakes on this one are going to be all black um same on the 860 same wheels um we did not put the inserts on the bumper but we can change those out pretty easily mm -hmm. Um, so really, truly power the train is going to be the same as from before, mm -hmm. 455 horse. These are both XC motors, uh, so 264 rear ends, uh, so really fuel efficient. Do they both have the compound turbo? No, the 860 has the turbo compound engine. We can go over that in just a second. Okay. This is just going to be a straight up 455 XC motor, mm -hmm. uh, 1850 foot pounds of torque, um, really fuel efficient. So we're looking at nine miles a gallon. That's the goal. It's nine miles a gallon. You, it depends on your trailer and all that too. It depends on the trailer. It depends on the gap. It depends on how fast you go. This engine sweet spot will be anywhere between, say, 60 and 72 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you stay within that range, uh, you do pretty well. So, Perfect. Um, again, all blacked out down the side. No, no tension or anything. This is going to have uh, 250 gallons of fuel. Mm -hmm. So 150 on the driver's side, 100 gallons. So, mm. dual stacks we did this one up a little nice uh probably a little nicer than most of our 760s dual pipes on the back you'll also notice a backup camera that's new for this year the uh infotainment screen is finally in backup camera so when you put wow. the truck in reverse where you can turn the camera on manually you will get a backup uh backup camera so if you're backing up to a flatbed you need to check your straps if you're backing up to your trailer just kind of want to see where the center line is for the pin mm -hmm. Air ride suspension as before, 40,000 pound rears, 13.2 on the front. Uh, we did upgrade the fifth wheel a little bit, so this is a Fontaine 6000 series. Mm -hmm. uh, no slack fifth wheel. Fifth, no slack fifth. Do you, do you have to, uh, you still have to grease this one though? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so y'all didn't go for the, the uh, what is it, ceramic, what is it? So there's a Teflon coat yeah, that Alcoa does. It's a billet aluminum fifth wheel, which we do have a truck here that has one. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a $2,500 upgrade. It does save you a little bit of weight. Okay. I'm is it worth it? not a big fan of it, yeah. but that's just me. So okay. I, if you're looking to save weight, cut about 25 gallons out of your fuel tank. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll save weight a lot more, uh, a lot easier this way than you will trying to put that. Messing in. with that. And yeah. I'm sure that is a considerable upgrade to get the Teflon. Absolutely. Okay. It's 25 ish $100 for that. It saves you money to take, to take the uh, fuel tank down. Two main differences. The original 760s that came out only came with one style bunk on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it was the reclining bunk, uh, which Palma was pretty proud of. It helped with sleep apnea. Um, this year they brought the workstation back. So anybody that had a 670 that missed the workstation, um, it is back. So it's available now on the bottom. Mm. Foldable upper bunk, 
with a safety ladder built in the bottom. So getting in and out of the upper bunk now in this truck is much easier than it used to be. Mm. 670 you used to actually have to stand up on the yeah. <laughs> top of the refrigerator, be a gymnast and get up to the top. Now it's got a ladder. So try to make it easier. I did think that recliner situation was pretty cool though. It was pretty neat. We've had people that love it. Um, there's people that just absolutely didn't want anything to do with it. So it's <laughs> just a regular bunk on the bottom and that's fine. That's so fine. we can suit the truck to however however people want it. And so, you, you were saying that this, this one is a seven inches smaller than that one. Right, so in comparison, this is bigger than the 670 used to be. Mm -hmm. 670 was a 60 inch, 61 inch sleeper. This is a 70 inch sleeper, so it puts us more competitive with the Freightliner, with a Kenworth, um, that kind of thing. Gives a little bit more room. It does have the new airplane style windows, um, but it's not quite as big as the 860 behind mm -hmm. it. So, um, this is great for a single truck um, operation. operation. Uh, you know, fleets can use this for some regional haul stuff where they maybe slip seat drivers from terminal to terminal, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. These are great. Uh, even just somebody starting out, um, this is uh, this is a good way to kind of get into, you know, well, really maybe you step can, off into the big one. You can close some myths here. See, most, a lot of guys think that the, the, the Volvo's way more expensive than your average truck. Is, well, that, is that true? So it can be. Um, it, so it's all relative. It's all how you spec the truck out. And mm -hmm. we get this call all the time where people say, well, I saw an 860 online and it was, $8,000 cheaper than yours. Okay, and it might be. But the fact of the matter is, it's all in how the dealer specs the truck. So mm. this truck is gonna be considerably more than say a white one that I've got sitting over here that's mm -hmm. that's more spec for a fleet. Yeah. Lower interior. Mega carrier um, spec. Single, spe single stack on the back, you know, 425 horsepower, that all makes a difference in the mm. price. So, um, we try and keep owner operators in mind when we do these. Yeah. And uh, really and truly, we spec them out. You're going to be in this thing for 300 days a year, so you might as well be comfortable. Exactly. Here. So we try and bolt ours up a little bit with some more bells and whistles. We do things that maybe people wouldn't think of doing, like putting black wheels on it, putting mm -hmm. black you know mirror covers on it, just really murdering this thing out. Yeah. But at the same time, we're going to give you a really nice truck. Um, and I can't put all of this time and effort into doing that and then put a single stack on the back. That yeah. would just look silly. So I'm gonna put dual stacks in the back. I gotta put a, I gotta put the new touchscreen. This is the other new thing for this year. Um, the infotainment center, which is which is now available. Oh. Okay. So this is all touchscreen. Uh, it moves your radio into play. Your XM radio is now in here. This one also comes with turn by turn navigation by TomTom, Tom, wow. which you can get. Um, with or without that, but it is Apple CarPlay compatible and Android Auto compatible. Wow. So um, so now you've got in-dash navigation. So you didn't even have to get anything from the, the truck stuff now. No, no. And I've had, I did have a customer, the first one of these I got, um, he put his his Garmin that he's had for years up on his dash. He mm -hmm. had his, his same location in here and they were spot on. So, so it does fit for the 13 high weight, everything. Yep. Yeah, you can go in here and uh, you can start putting in whatever you're, you know, you can get parking, you can get gas stations, you can do all of your um, dimensions, your mm. weights, your max speed, if you're hunting hazmat or not, you can put all of that in here and the map will tell you exactly where you go that's going to be fitted uh, wow. for your free application. So. That'd be nice because, you know, those uh, GPSs in the truck stop can get up to $700. Oh, absolutely. They're Absolutely. This is a little pricier, but you've got everything now in, included. So yeah. your your in dash, uh, your radio is in here. You can do a web browser. Mm -hmm. This will carry over again from Apple, um, the Apple CarPlay, so you can run your iHeartRadio, your Pandora, and all that stuff just like you could in your car. Mm. So and then your phone's connected, but everything in here is all touchscreen. It's pretty pretty simple, and then you've got access. Um, You've got access in here when the truck is in reverse. You can actually put it. Um, let me show you that because your backup camera will kick in. Wow! So now you've got your backup camera accessible there as well. That is very convenient. So if you're trying to back up to a dock, if you're trying to, you know, you just need to back up to a trailer. If you're back into a parking spot, I mean, anything that you need that you can kind of look around you. It's, pretty uh yeah, that just comes on automatically comes on as soon as you put it in reverse so 
it's nice. Yeah. So this okay. So what we got here is it's not that much more expensive. It depends on how you deck it out. It's all how you deck it out. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, fuel mileage we're trying to be at depending on your trailer. We're trying to be at around seven and nine. Yep. So you can uh, with this one, and this is a four fifty five XE. If you're hauling just general freight and you're not running super heavy, go to a four twenty five horse. Mm -hmm. Save yourself on. Uh, on the amount of fuel that you burn, the heat that you're generating, you're still going to get 1750 foot pounds of torque, which mm -hmm. is more than you can get in a Detroit. Mm. Um, their 450 horse is at 1650. So um, there's a misconception about torque and horsepower. It's not all about horsepower, it's mm. about the torque. The torque's what's going to move your load. Yeah, the, everybody the wants horsepower is just going to get you there a little faster. Mm. So yeah, well, that, that makes perfect sense. But can yeah. you explain to us this? Because the, the composite. Uh, uh, turbo, what do they call that? The, the turbo compound? Yeah, the turbo compound. Mm -hmm. Are y'all the, ex is that exclusive to Volvo? It is exclusive to Volvo. Now, again, we're going to get the naysayers that say, well, Freightliner tried it with a double turbo and, mm -hmm. you know, somebody else has tried it with a dual turbo. It's a little different. This has been tried and true in Europe for the last six or seven years or so. Okay. It's built with components. We can go look at it. It's mm -hmm. built with components that are that Volvo has used in their rear engine PTO. It's the same set of parts. So the parts are tried and true and have been for years. It's just done in a whole different configuration. So mm. it's a second inline turbo. You've got your VGT that you normally have. Now you've got your secondary turbo right behind it that's gonna run a crankshaft that actually will, you're gonna take the hot exhaust gas, it's gonna turn the crankshaft and that's gonna help the engine produce 50 additional horsepower. Mm. Now. It's not 455, it produces 50 horsepower and gets you to 500, that's not how it works. It still runs at 455, it just takes much less energy to do that. Mm. So the idea is less energy, less heat generated, uh, let the engine sort of help itself, yeah. that's where your fuel mileage is gonna come in. So, and, and that composite engine, does it have a better MPG than this one? It can, if it's spec'd correctly. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some, that are Austin store sold. The guys running from, uh, I believe, Florida to California, California back across the Midwest to New York, and then New York down to Florida. Mm -hmm. And he's averaging somewhere in the tens. Wow. Um, I've got one that I spec'd on a 860 with an adaptive loading axle. Mm -hmm. That truck is still getting broken in, uh, but even on short runs, he's in the nine and a half range. Um, the lighter loads that he runs, he's pushing 10. Mm. But he's a he's pretty happy with his nine and a half. So about forty two, you, you you know, as long as you're seeing seven and up, you're you're doing better than the average bear. And these trucks, you should see over seven. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's all in how you run it. If you idle the truck forever, you're going to burn more fuel. Your idle time is going to kill your miles per gallon. Mm. So if you get an APU, if you plug into the shore power, yeah. if you get a one of the battery, uh, the electric EPUs. Mm -hmm. Do y'all are you do y'all have an APU company y'all use? We use everybody. It's whoever the customer wants. So okay. uh Thermal King mm -hmm. um is by far the best, but they're expensive. So they're gonna run I think right now they're at twelve eight Ooh. installed. Um That's we do money. use carrier. Mm -hmm. Um carrier will tie into the existing system as well. They're right now a little over ten. And I when I when I get the truck here, I can just say, "Hey, add that to the financing." Absolutely, we can roll that into the payment. We can roll that into the invoice if you tell us up front. I want to put this on my note. Mm -hmm. Finance everything together. So this this these units don't have some type of a, a shore. They do have shore power. So I mean, what I mean was with the idling, like it just idles and knows when it'll to just, cut on and off. It'll idle. So it'll idle. Um, everything is ordered by default to give you a five minute idle. Mm -hmm. So uh, at five minutes, it'll alert you and then it'll kick off. Um, you'll have to manually restart it. Mm. There is shore power available. Um, all the sleepers that we have here, we do spec with a factory installed inverter, which you'll notice on the back panel, the upper right corner is the inverter. It's an mm. 1800 watt factory installed inverter. Mm -hmm. Um, that's about as much as you're going to want to put in here. I have heard stories of people putting bigger ones. I don't recommend it, but everybody to each their own. You got the plug right up here. So, yeah. So you've got your microwave set up up there with the 110 available and a 12 volt. And then behind you, you've got your TV mount. 
And this goes up to 20, 22? You can do 28 pretty easily. I've seen 32 inches. Mm. Um, the issue we ran into on the last uh, truck that put a 32 inch TV up there was not so much the size, but it was, it was between that and the PlayStation and the microwave and the refrigerator all running at the same time and drew too many amps. Oh. So it actually popped a fuse. Uh, mm. So you just gotta be careful on what kind of TV you're putting up there and what you're trying to run all at the same time. So yeah. there are 110 plugs up there. There's also a 110 plug down here at the bottom. So you've got access there. The back panel is your control for your sleeper fan, your lights. You, you now have a door lock, uh, which was not there before. And That's you also have convenient. a pair of USB plugs and a 12 volt plug on the back. Mm. So, and this one does have the subwoofer in it, right? This does have a subwoofer. It's going to be right behind your leg there on the passenger side, uh, oh. underneath the cabinet or underneath the uh, under storage. Okay. So this is listen, y'all have to thank Mr. Elliot. He always gives us the best stuff and the new stuff coming out. Is there anything new coming down the pipeline that we should? know about for volvo um so this fall so nothing with the sleepers the vn was done at the end of 18. Mm -hmm. um the remodel everybody is getting stock back in mm -hmm. orders are still up so um we've got trucks that'll fit just about any budget from fedex spec trucks to uh fleet spec trucks to owner operators to things that are not quite the same mm -hmm. uh the biggest thing this year is going to be the VHD, their heavy duty truck, which we do have a few here. Um, those are going to get a facelift. So mm -hmm. new hood design this year. And I think that's going to be it for the, for that. So and we can take care of the redesigns. That's perfect. Will I will leave his number at the bottom of this whole video at mm -hmm. where you can call Mr. Elliot and get to work out the ins and outs. If you're right. uh, with a company, you uh, uh and they they get your truck for you you can talk to them to see if they have some type of fleet workout you know it, it doesn't always just have to be a walk-in thing maybe like i'm with rst if i wanted one of these i would just go to rst and they would talk to them and it, they will work it out yep so and we that, do so we sell to everybody i mm -hmm. mean i, I will sell to people in houston we'll sell to people across the country we're not i mean if we've got the truck that you want we'll sell it to y'all deliver uh we can deliver within houston if you want to pay to have it delivered somewhere we'll do that we'll do that too absolutely it's all right just, so this is mr elliot showing y'all everything y'all need to know about volvo make sure you sub to the channel like and subscribe to the trucker brown channel every time volvo gets something new you got to talk to mr elliot number at the bottom y'all have a nice day Throw me to the woods, I came back with a fur I left on the bus, I came back in the vert the